Hi guys, Rod from VMN here. Over the next few weeks we're going to be showing uh, some videos of an installation of, of battery, dual batteries into a Toyota Hilux. And I thought before we started we'd just quickly talk about which battery to choose. So you can see here that we have a gel cell battery here in a battery box and over here we have a conventional lead acid deep cycle battery. So what to choose, aside from lithium, um, if you're fitting a battery into the tub of your ute, then we would recommend that possibly a gel cell um, will give you higher charge, but will require a better battery isolator charging system. Um, so you can see here that this is the box that's designed to fit in, to bolt down in the back of your car and then the battery will clip in there and be held on by some bolts through here. If you're going to put a battery under the bonnet with the engine, then we strongly recommend that you consider using purely using a deep cycle lead acid battery such as this one. Um, the reason for that is they're a lot lighter than these and also they're more tolerant to heat and they're also more tolerant to, um, to, to vibration. Plus, they don't need as high a charging voltage, so in some circumstances you can get away, get away with a standard isolator such as the Matson one that we sell complete with a wiring kit or um, possibly the good old standbys, the Red Arc. Um, uh, isolator. So there you have it, that's the battery to choose. So usually with the Hilux, the, the dual battery, there's room for it in the back corner behind the passenger side. And um, normally we would put isolators and that sort of thing for the dual charging system, but we're using a, an intervolt DC to DC charger here, and the manufacturer said he didn't that it was best to situate it out near the radiator where there was plenty of um, plenty of cooling. So it's taken us a while to design and fit this mount, but basically we now have a beautiful mount that's going to go in this position here. That's going to have um, beautiful beautiful airflow through this area here. So um, stay tuned. Let's see how we go. one mounting bolt here on a bracket that's a little bit hard, hard to get to down the bottom end but it just put, goes straight into an existing thread. So we've now got a nice little platform here and we've added a um, four M4 nutsert screws that will uh, hold the intervolt um, power supply in there, the intervolt charger. This is a DC to DC 25 amp charger.
I'm going to just take that cover off just to show them. So on the Intervolt, this top cover just comes off and it gives you full access to all the mounting hardware. So um, that's how uh, it'll be nice and easy to, um, to be able to put this together from here. So we've just drilled a hole in this top panel that fills in here and what that should allow us to do now is to we should be able to visually check the status of the interval just by looking down into that hole very cool so we're getting closer to being done now we've got the intervolt um, almost wired up now ready to put the lid on so we'll just put the lid on Still um, haven't wired solo into this vehicle yet, but that'll be another project. Um, so the other thing we've done is wire in the intervolt um, sensor. So this saves having to wire it into the ignition. This little thing here, we hope it's going to pick up the um, vibrations of the vehicle. So um, in in its absence, you would need to wire back to ignition inside the vehicle. So this means you just plug it in, it's wired back to the intervolt, and now we're um, we're close to being finished here. So um, there's our glow ring for the intervolt. So we've replaced the um, replaced the battery holder clamp with one of our own design, um, which is going to carry all our fuses. So. We'll just see how that goes. Just put one on. So using the nut sets makes the assembly very quick here, but um, you need the right tool to insert the nut. There's actually a number of um, fuses required here, more so than you'd ever imagine with the intervolt because they want um, fuses on just about everything. So one of these will um, be for the solar, another will be for the um, for the wiring down to the back and also another one for the innocent plug. So three of those there, I'm sure. And then we'll add a fourth so that we can use a um, add a fuse box here in the engine bay somewhere. And we've also picked up this fuse here is a factory fuse so we had a spare one here so this one goes through to a fuse box which we've removed for now, the yellow one that was on the car and this one here we've added which is the one that goes back back here to the interval hidden in here again. To show you a couple of different style of crimping tools that we use. Um, this larger one here is good for battery terminals, but we found that we could do just as good a job um, crimping the um, crimping the Anderson plug ends on the BNS6 cable using this smaller one. So um, uh, this one here, they're only about forty dollars on eBay or something like that. So they were a very handy tool to have if you start doing electrical wiring. So we've drilled and tapped um, a couple of holes for the solar connector and on the other side of the tow bar um, just a standard Anderson plug. So um, we've picked this position because we think it's nice and protected, um, well and truly protected, so it should be good. So we've had a bit of luck here, we thought we'd just try it, but we've been able to pull um, two cables, one for the solar and one for the Anderson plug back right up through the chassis rail. So let's have a look at the other end. So we've been able to bring these out two different holes right up the front of the chassis and actually puts us perfectly, if we can see it here, perfectly below 
the firewall so one of those cables will be solar and the other one will be pulled up there for the Anderson plug so um, so there's nothing in the road that can be knocked around or anything like that I won't say it's easy to do this but um, it's worth the effort I've got to say this was much easier on a hoist than the last time I did this so we've got the um, Anderson plugs all lined up and it's just worth mentioning now that um, the reason why we've used two different coloured Anderson plugs here is that um, they, they won't intermix so basically we, if we use put a red um, Anderson plug in there it will only fit the red socket and the same over here it will only fit the grey Anderson socket so so um, that's um, that's basically why we've done it so this is the wiring that we've done for the um, in the tub. We've actually pulled an extra wire through here with some twin core that will give us two. We'll use a common earth, and that will give us two circuits. So um, one of those is a angle connector which screws in, which is excellent for the fridge, my angle fridge, of course. And um, the other one is a merit connector, which actually uses a much more heavier duty connector than. Um, than a standard cigarette plug so the merit connectors um, are good for about 30 volts so now that's in we've got the little um, nut certs again in place so it's just a matter of screwing that on and we've got a bit of wiring to do in the um, in the engine bay